Hey everyone, welcome to another Spry tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show you my personal tips of using Spry to make awesome 3D. So let's get into it. So tip number one, use the sphere as an environment. So in this example, we have this Spider-Man character here, and I wanted to create a environment of the city surrounding him, but we cannot do that from the property panels. The only thing that we can change is to change the colors. So what we're going to do is to create a sphere and then make it really big. And then go to the material panel and switch the color channel to image and load this city 360 image that I have here. And then let's go to the property and switch UV to spherical. And go to the visibility section and turn on this back size. So now you, you can see that the sphere is being flipped and you can see the Spider-Man inside. And make sure to turn off the lighting layer to get rid of the shadow. So uh, now it will give you this really cool environment like this. So tip number two, use depth channel as an ambient shadow. So in this example, I have this character holding the babies and normally you can turn on the shadow from the light, uh, but it's kind of casting this long shadow like this. But what I wanted to have the very soft ambient shadow. So one way we can do it is to use the depth channel of the material. So I'm going to duplicate it and uh, go to the material panels and add another layer so for this one we're going to select depth then you can drag it down below the lighting layers and in the color section i'm going to change the outer color to something similar to the skin and then just reduce the opacity by zero and for the centers i'm going to use this a little bit darker colors like this and then move it to uh, the right positions. Uh, so now you can see that it's created fake ambient shadows that enhance the depth of the scene comparing to the one on the left. So tip number three, dim the ambient light for the dark scene. So by default, a splice scene is lighted by a directional light, which is this one. But the thing is that when you reduce the light intensities, it doesn't make the scene darker. It's only make it look less contrast. So how do we make the whole scene darker? So very simple, just click anywhere on this empty space here and it will show you the scene properties and from here you can adjust the scene ambient light to make the whole scene darker by reducing this intensity and then you can increase the directional light intensity uh, to give it more contrast. Okay, tip number four, lighting angle matters. So have you ever wondered why that your 3D scene doesn't look as good as others? Uh, it could be anything, but sometimes it's just simply the light direction is not working. For example, in this scene here, we have the light just pointing 90 degree angles down to the scene, which make it a little bit weird to look at. Uh, so all you have to do is just like to move the light to a different position. Uh, so you can see that the light direction is changing. And now you see that the scene is already much better. So you can keep exploring different position, different angle of the light to uh, see what's work the best for your scene. Tip number five, import external environment to your scene. So did you know that you can import a more realistic environment or terrain to your slide scene? So you can go to sketchfab.com. So this gives you a lot of free 3D resources and then you can search for terrain and then make sure to turn on the downloadable um, to filter down uh, only the free results. So I'm going to select this. And so this is looking good. So we're going to um, go to uh, the download section here and download the GLTF file. So it will give you this zip file. So let me unzip the file. And in the inside we have the scene.gltf and a bin file. And then let's move the textures out of here. Uh, so we have the free file. So normally we would import from Splite and then select GLG app and then select the file. But for some reason, it doesn't work because the bin file is supposed to be merged to the GLG app file. So I found a way to to work around with this. So so all we need to do is to go to this uh, website. So I'm going to put the link on the description and then drop all of the file in here. So I'm going to go back to the folder and then select this free file then just drop it to this website and then it will give you this GLB file. So basically it's a zip file of all of the others uh, GLG app and the bin file in here. So now let's go back to Spline and then instead of import it, uh, let's just drop it to the Spline scene. 
and now you see that it's working perfectly so now you can try this with any other external 3d file from sketchfab without having to worry that it doesn't work all right so tip number six fake reflection so reflection is something very really common in any 3d tool but for some reason sprite haven't updated any reflection feature yet so we can still uh, make a fake reflection by doing this method so i'm going to um, duplicate this characters into the second one and then just flip it and move it down uh, to the opposite direction like this and then let's create a cylinder and move it right below the first character and then let's copy the background colors and paste it to the cylinder materials and then turn off the lighting layer so now it's almost invisible and I'm going to add another layers for this one I'm going to use glass and then let's move it down here and maybe make the cylinders uh, much much bigger like this so we don't see the edge uh, so now we have something like this uh, so now you can play around with this glass um, properties uh, to make it blurrier maybe reduce the thickness by zero and maybe increase the blur more so now we have this um, really nice reflection blurry reflections and then you can also reduce the intensity of the glass material to make it uh, less prominence so that's it that's how you can make a fake reflection so tip number seven fake shadows so if you've been watching my tutorial you've seen that i'm using this technique a lot basically it's how you can create a fake shadow without using the platform or using the shadow from the light so all you have to do is just go to the top view and then create a rectangles and then switch the color to gradients and go to the gradient properties and switch this to radios and now you can just adjust the color to match up with whatever background color that you have so i'm going to use the same colors here and then for the centers i'm going to use a darker colors like this so now you can see that we have a really nice sharp ambient shadow right underneath this character so tip number eight light follows cursor so this one's really simple so uh, i have the scene here with the light casting uh this really nice long shadow here so i'm going to add an event to the light so let's select follow and then just hit play to preview so now you can control the light directions with your mouse cursors. It's, it's create this really cool interaction with almost zero effort. Tip number nine, use AI generated pattern to make your scene looks better. So I have this scene here with this coffee cup, but it's look a little bit boring. So I can go to the materials and add a layers. And for this layer, I'm going to select image and then uh, you click on the thumbnails and then down here you can click on generate with ai and from here let's um, make sure that we uh, give it like a bigger resolution and then just type anything you want so i'm going to type kit pattern um, to see what it can come up with and just click generate and then it will give you some random result but the beauty is that you don't need to find like resources access on Google anymore. You just need to generate and be creative with uh, what you can imagine by just typing the prompts for it to generate. So we, we have something very quite nice like this. So I'm going to use this and then just uh, make some changes to the material to make it look better. And now we have this more interesting looking coffee cup in just a few seconds. All right, so final tip of the day, create a stylized type. So we have this path tool to create a 3D object based on whatever you're drawing. So I'm going to draw a number 10. And then you can go to the properties here and change the shape to polygon. And you can also change the angle properties as well as the twist property to come up with really cool result like this. I'm going to do the same to the zero. And once we're happy with the shape, you can add more material to make it look much better. So I changed my mind. Maybe I wanted to make these um, riches uh, even smaller uh, like this. And now you can just play around with the materials, especially the depth channels to uh, make it 
it looks more contrast. So that's it. That's the end of my tutorial today. So I hope you find it helpful. And if you still watching, just type bingo in the comments so I know that you are watching the whole video. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.